All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how deals are closed and, you know, what the process looks like. Sometimes there's going to be a lot of paperwork. Other times there's going to be a little paperwork, but still even a little paperwork is typically going to still be, you know, a decent chunk, I would say, you know. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how deals are closed and, you know, what the process looks like. Sometimes there's going to be a lot of paperwork. Other times there's going to be a little paperwork, but still even a little paperwork is typically going to still be, you know, a decent chunk. I would say, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 pages on the low end, you know, and if the buyer's using a lender, uh, the paperwork could be in sometimes that thick, right? So the title company, it's their job um, or the closing attorney, of course, to handle and get all this stuff prepared. You as the buyer or the seller won't need to prepare any paperwork. However, if you are buying in an LLC, you will need to provide the title company a copy of your articles of organization, your operating agreement, as well as your EIN number. Right. These are going to be things that the title company is going to require by law so they can record who bought or sold the property, as well as report to the IRS the gain and or the purchase and sale price of the property. If you are not using an LLC, then you won't need an, the articles, you won't need the EIN, you won't need the operating agreement, but you will need to give them your social security number, your name, and they will often ask you to file or fill out some very minor tax documents so they can, again, report to the government. So in this video, we're going to talk about how deals are closed. Well, deals are going to typically be closed at a title company and or a closing attorney's office. And again, that can be the same company or people in some scenarios. Some scenarios may be different. Me in my local market of St. Louis, Missouri, we don't need closing attorneys. We just go to title company. So when we are closing a deal, we just go to the title company, sit at the conference table, and we sign the docs. So a seller is going to need to sign the docs and the buyer is going to need to sign the docs. Well, if you are wholesaling a deal and you are assigning it, you are neither a buyer or a seller. You are just in the middle getting paid a fee. So the only thing that you would need to sign is your assignment agreement or maybe your joint venture agreement, depending on how you've structured the deal. Now, if you are a seller, you're going to need to sign. And if you are a married seller, your spouse is also going to need to sign. If you are a buyer, you are going to need to sign. And if you are a buyer that's married, you may also need to have your spouse's signature. Now there's ways around this. You can always get a power of attorney. I mean, there's other docs that can be used as well if you're married, but we're not going to get into that in this, in this video here. Keep it simple. That's what we're going to try to do here. Now, here's the thing. We often buy properties from sellers who live out of the city, out of the state. And I've even bought some properties from sellers that live out of the country. Not a big deal. They do not need to come to your local title company to sign the documents. Oftentimes what you can do is you can fax or email the documents to the seller or even the buyer and they can go and they can do and sign those documents in front of a notary. Typically speaking, what happens is, is they can go to their bank who has a notary typically on staff. They can go to another title company who of course has notaries on staff. Or what you can do is you can hire a local notary, local to wherever they are in the world, and you can fax or email the docs to the notary. The notary can print those docs off, go and, and meet the buyer or the seller, verify that they are who they are and watch them, physically watch them sign the docs and then stamp the docs with their little notary stamp. And then what they typically will do is they will scan and email those back to the title company as well as overnight FedEx the documents back. The original documents are going to most likely be needed every single time. So the cleanest way to do this is to meet the buyer or the seller, depending on what side of the transaction you're on, at the local title company. You both sign, they notarize, you walk out, the seller will get a check, assuming they have proceeds, and the buyer will get the keys, right? And vice versa. Don't overthink it. The way that deals are closed, I highly leverage and lean on my title companies. And I always teach my students to do the same, guys. Leverage the title company. It is their job. 
And in fact, they are getting paid by both the buyer and the seller to facilitate the transaction. Your job as an investor or a wholesaler isn't to facilitate the documents or the transaction itself. It's just to create a win-win scenario, or if you're wholesaling, a win-win-win scenario. You want your seller to get out of the problem that they are in. Often you can fix their problem or help them by buying the property. You win by making a profit in the middle. And the end buyer, the cash buyer, is going to get a deal with some meat on the bone. So you can create triple win scenarios. That's where you wanna focus your time, energy, and efforts is creating winning scenarios. Don't think that you need to become an expert at facilitating transactions or filling out paperwork. That's the title company's job. So let them do their job. And that's it. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple and rely on your title company to help facilitate the transaction because that is their job.